Dr. Gauri, you may start with the introduction. Please start. Okay, thank you, Dr. Majid. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, myself, Dr. Gauri Jarat, scientist in IVRI, one of the course co-director in this training program. First of all, I welcome you all in the morning session of day four of this very training. Today, we all are very fortunate to have Dr. Bhojra Singh Sir, an internationally recognized, renowned epidemiologist in our training program. I welcome you, sir, and thank you, sir, for sparing the time for us. Now, yeah, I would like you. to take the privilege to introduce our today's speaker, Dr. Bhojra Singh, sir. Dr. B.R. Singh, who has done MVSC, PhD, PGT in IPR, that is Intellectual Property Rights, is a principal scientist and head of the epidemiology division at Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Izzatnagar He has the experience of more than 30 years in research, training, and clinics in the discipline of veterinary microbiology and epidemiology. He has 150 research papers, six review papers in journals of international repute, and has earned more than 2,100 citations with H index of 23 and I-10 index of 64, and which is very huge. He has published two books from Lambert Academic Press, Germany, and two books from IVRI. And his one book in alternate antimicrobial therapy is under publication, and it will be available within a month. He has 18 review articles, 87 international research papers, 99 Indian research papers, 13 book chapters, 5 books, 15 reports at national platform, 25 abstracts, 4 folders, 8 posters, 1 popular article in his very count. His work on multiple drug resistance in pathogens of veterinary importance is widely cited. His online lectures are also available at slideshare.net, which has greater than uh, 15,000 viewers per year. And there are 74 lectures in number. You may also visit that site and enrich your knowledge. He is also a scientific blogger and has 92 blogs at azadindiablogspot.com with greater than 120K readers. He is also known for developing the first kit for synthetic mold detection. His major contributions are in the development of a genetically defined oral vaccine for the control of salmonellosis and a toxide vaccine for the control of clipsilosis. He remained director of the National Institute for Animal Health, Bhagpat, meant for uh, vaccine quality control and quality analysis. He has also contributed to the development of diagnostic for salmonellosis, clepsilosis, and parvovirus infections. He has guided 12 MVSC students and 5 PhD students. Dr. Singh has also organized one international seminar on alternatives to antimicrobials, five short courses for scientists and teaching uh, working in epidemiology, three training for field veterinarians, Kisan Mela, and Kisan scientist interaction meets. Dr. Singh has experience of research and education in many different climatic zones of the country, also in the United Kingdom. He has been a recipient of Dr. C.M. Singh Best Paper Award twice and the Award of Honor of IVRI. Dr. Singh is a reviewer of research proposals for National Center of Science and Technology Evaluation, Ministry of Education and Science, Astana, Republic of Kazakhstan, Visiting Faculty at Time, PG Institute, Dehradun, and International Faculty on Enteric Disease at University of Sarsari, Italy. Presently, he is working on synergy in antibiotics and herpal antimicrobials. He has also explored the epidemiology of the emergence of antimicrobial drug resistance in bacteria of veterinary clinical significance. You may also find his published work at ResearchKit. Dear participants, this was just a brief introduction. There are many uncountable and unsung 
accomplishments in his crown and many more are there on the way and we are really very privileged to have you sir i again welcome you sir and request you to enrich us with your wisdom sir over to you dr b r singh sir thank you thank you dr gauri for uh, an elaborate uh, introduction thank you sir so can you see yes, my presentation yes you can see it yes sir i just go to slide 1 so dear friends and participants and organizers for uh, providing me the opportunity the respiratory infections they are really very big problem and uh, one of the respiratory tract infection that is covid 19 is uh, haunting this world since last two years and uh, created lot of problem and uh, many of the people who are dying due to covid 19 they have secondary bacterial infections in their lungs and sometimes even the fungal infections so it is important to understand that what are the different bacteria which may cause respiratory tract infection bacteria may cause primary or secondary infection but uh, we will be talking holistically on the basis of experience of our laboratory on investigation of more than 257 cases of respiratory tract infections referred to our laboratory but here i will warn you again that this data is based on referred cases only in general when first man Uh, any case come to a veterinarian for treatment usually it has been treated before by some quacks or many a time by farmers himself or a uh, lot many things have been tried so things are very much different for vet vets they usually get the respiratory tract infection suspected by secondary invasion <coughs> sorry rather than the first or the primary cause of the infection there are so many viral infections but when they come to the veterinary polyclinic or veterinarians help by that time virus has gone and most of the time it is only bacteria which need the treatment so common causes of respiratory tract infections included viruses bacteria and bacteria may be u bacteria rickettsia chlamydia and mycoplasma there may be lot many fungi protozoa and helminths so we will not concentrate on other things except from bacteria and in brief i will be presenting that what we have done uh, as a whole and then thereafter i will give you a bit uh, insight into infections of different and in uh, reported in different animals and what are the uh, uh, we can say the options with us for treatment which are the antibiotics which are more uh, more effective which are the antibiotics which are less effective so in our laboratory we received 210 samples from upper respiratory tract infections and they belong to the isolates belong to 38 species beside these which are shown here these are the major bacteria which were isolated and you can see e coli enterobacter klebsiella pneumoniae and pseudomonas serigenosa these are common cells most of the time bacillus species that is bacillus strains they are rare cause of infections and have been reported to cause some nodular type of infections in lungs and pleurisy staphylococcus aureus staphylococcus hemolyticus 
pheromones these mostly you see they are mostly the bacteria which are commensals to the healthy animals which are normally present that means they usually get into the system when the animal has suffers with some primary cause which make the respiratory tract uh, amenable to invasion by these commensal bacteria but certainly some of the bacteria like streptococcus equine subspecies do epidemicus mostly reported from equines as cause of the upper respiratory tract infection pastorella cavalli again in horses streptococcus milleri is very common pathogen uh, opportunistic pathogen rather i should say streptococcus uh, porcinus streptococcus pyogenes and cyanobacter these are mostly these bacteria are common cells but moraxella bovis is often associated with the eye infections in cattle is also uh, associated with many of the respiratory tract infections so you can see there are so many bacteria and the question is that what should be the uh, way of treatment we do not know when animal come to our uh, help that is uh, to vet for treatment how veterinarian can know that either it is moraxella or it is pastorella or some certainly some pastorella maltosida infections like hs they can be identified easily but in other cases it is very difficult to say that which bacteria is causing the respiratory tract infection so we we have to think some common antibiotics or common antimicrobials which may be of help so the most effective and least effective antimicrobials on bacteria of upper respiratory tract infections when we screened that among the herbal antimicrobials cinnamaldehyde uh, present in cinnamon oil carvacrol present in thyme oil and ajwain oil so basically if we see if these are the two the cinnamaldehyde and carvacrol these are the two components they are also present in ajwain oil and thyme oil particularly carvacrol and cinnamaldehyde in cinnamon oil so we can use these uh, herbal antimicrobials in form of the fumes in form of the steam inhalation and but we cannot uh, Uh, make animals to steam inhalate at their base we have to uh, fill the uh, chamber uh, with steam with these herbal antimicrobials and there we have to put the uh, animal for some time so that it can inhale that uh, anti antimicrobial which uh, and these uh, herbal antimicrobials these cannot be administered systematically yes we can give them orally in blend oil but that usually do not reach to the lung in the required concentration and two of the herbal antimicrobials that is sandalwood oil and agar agarwood oil agar oil it is commonly known as it is very costly oil sandalwood oil is also very costly oil and they are uh, Uh, known uh, for their antimicrobial activity since long but on respiratory infections they were the least effective so we have to think that which are best and which are the least effective among the antimicro antibiotics imipenem miropenem and tvcycline these three drugs they are most effective that is they can kill more than 95% 90% of bacteria but uh, veterinarians cannot use any of the four linazolid is effective for gram positive bacteria so we have very limited option for antibiotics and the least effective antibiotics you can see that amoxicillin ampicillin amoxiclav vincomycin methicillin and erythromycin these are often used by veterinarians and there is every chance of failure because 
less than 50% of bacteria they are susceptible to these drugs so we had observation on 47 cases of lower respiratory tract infection when lungs get involved or we can say the pneumonia is there and there also you can see e coli and klebsiella pneumonia they are the major bacteria which are usually isolated and again you will see that there are several bacteria but they are not among those which are often taught us in bbsc or even in mvsc while talking of the respiratory pathogens they are much different than those respiratory pathogens which we have been taught so why it is so it is because at most of the time bacteria are the secondary invaders in injured lungs they can colonize and they can cause the damage and they are the usually cause of death rather than the primary cause and most effective and least effective antimicrobial on lower respiratory tract again cinnamon oil and cinnamaldehyde and that is carvacrol and one they are the common to upper respiratory tract infection also but this pacholi that is pogo stomon tablin oil that is specifically more effective on the infections where lung is involved but it is rarely effective on upper respiratory tract infections and least effective are again the sandalwood oil and agarwood oil the most effective uh, antibiotics they are again imipenem and niropenem tigicycline and linezolid which cannot be used in animals but chloramphenicol and to some extent vancomycin is also permitted but chloramphenicol may be the drug of choice and it is one of the cheaper antibiotic but it is not available uh, for large animal use for small animal use it is there and least effective are again the same the amoxiclav ampicillin erythromycin colistin vancomycin and methicillin so we have to be very careful while selecting while we uh, prescribe the antibiotics so now we come to animal wise that what are the common causes of respiratory tract infections in dog viruses there are several viruses bacteria bordetella bronchiseptica septica streptococcus ju epidemicus pasturella maltosida Pseudomona, Serigenosa, Klebsiella pneumoniae, E. coli, Mycoplasma, Nocardia, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and Mycobacterium bovis. These are usually considered as the primary cause, and you will see that several of these are isolated in our study. Bordetella bronchiseptica was also there in dogs in our study also, but. in dogs you can see that there are several other bacteria so klebsiella pneumoniae is there but morexella tetraralis which is thought to uh, cause the tetraral infections in cattle and human beings they also affect the dog but their isolation number of isolates are usually less in dogs and staphylococcus and bordetella bronchiseptica they appear to be one of the most common cause of the respiratory tract infection in particularly in upper respiratory tract and in when it is it comes to the pneumonia it is again e coli and streptococcus miliary so what are the best antibiotics for dogs among the uh, herbals they are the cinnamaldehyde carvacrol and thyme again and Uh, among antibiotics, imipenem, colistin, linezolid, piperacillin, tazobactam, imipenem in dogs people are using nowadays a lot. Colistin in animals it is almost at the level of ban, and it has already been banned in poultry. And linezolid that is one of the reserve drug for human being. Piperacillin, tazobactam you can use in animals. The most effective. 
herbal antimicrobials on bacteria isolated from lower respiratory tract against cinnamaldehyde and carbacrol and but in case of pneumonia in dogs you can think of cefepime and imipenem on official so infections which are affecting cattle and buffalo is they are again the bacteria the primary cause <coughs> but there are some uh, viruses are the primary cause and some of the bacteria that is manhemia hemolytica formerly known as pasturella hemolytica pasturella maltosida hemophila somnus and mycoplasma they are important and in our study we found again this Enterobacter agglomerans, E. coli, Aeromonas ukrainophila as important cause of upper respiratory tract infections and in lower respiratory tract infection, Clepsula pneumoniae and Fistulitia coli and hardly any of those which have been listed in the literature as major cause of the or major primary cause of the respiratory tract infection. So secondary invaders are again taking upper hand and burkhold area sepasia you can see in upper respiratory tract infection there were two isolate in two cases it was the important bacteria and you uh, you can imagine that burkhold area they are very dangerous and they are burkhold area sepasia specifically highly drug resistant and these uh, collapsella pneumonia and enterobacter agglomerans they are having multiple drug resistance and they are very uh, very uh, very good recipient of uh, resistance factors from other bacteria so they are important cause most effective antimicrobials here are the pacholi oil and cinnamaldehyde and google oil in uh, our uh, villages and in our ancient liter literature Google is said to be very good fumigating agent when there is some respiratory or viral infection. Any, any kind of respiratory problem, fumes of Google are shown to be very good. And in our study also we found that Google oil contains the ability to contain the growth of lot many bacteria. The most effective Antibiotics in buffalo, the TG cyclin, it is not permitted, linazole, it is not permitted, but cefotoxine you can use. And most effective herbal antimicrobial on lower respiratory tract, the, again the carvacrol, cinnamon oil, thyme oil, and pacholi mm -hmm. oil, beetle leaf oil, google oil, these are potentially very good for the buffaloes. And Cefotaxime is one of the choice of the drug, chloramphenicol, cefotaxime, clavulanic acid, and other drugs are not permitted in animals. Though in our laboratory we test those because uh, you can, in case of emergency, you can use any drug as off label use, but they are not usually permitted to be used in dairy animals. But when it is not a dairy buffalo, that is when it is just fever and you want to save the life, you can use these drugs. And some of the drugs like cefotaxime, clavulanic acid, they can be used in at any age group of the animal. So commonly reported causes of respiratory tract infections in pigs include viruses again, and bacteria among bacteria, mycoplasma, actinobacillus, bordetella, hemophilus. So these are the common. But secondary, and you see the pasturella maltosida here in pigs, it is secondary invader rather than the primary cause of respiratory tract infection. So, and you can see several of bacteria which are considered potentially pathogenic. They are common cell to the tonsils of pigs. That is Streptococcus suis, Streptococcus porcinus, Streptococcus dysgalaxy. These are often found to be cause of the, or isolated as uh, from respiratory tract infections. That means uh, they, they are just secondary invader rather than the primary cause. 
so common bacteria identified in our study in upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract cases in pigs they include enterobacter e coli acinetobacter aeromonas kvi they are often the common survivors lapsella pneumoniae and to our surprise one was the vibrio cholerae non ova that is a atypical bacteria which may cause the cholera and but it appears that it might have entered the pig as uh, an opportunist it may not be the cause of uh, pneumonia or a respiratory tract infection so i mean the common cause of lower respiratory tract infection the streptococcus suis which is present as common cell on tonsils is one of the most commonly isolated bacteria from the lower respiratory tract infections lower respiratory tract infections means when we take sample from the uh, lungs or we aspirate the uh, uh, pleural fluid lapsella oxytoca is one of the important pathogen which is reported rarely in uh, animals so uh, again the same set of the herbal antimicrobials here holy basil oil is another one which is which was not there in other animals effective so and most effective antibiotics in dogs in pigs may be the doxycycline which is very cheap drug and which can be Uh, given uh, with the safety we can say and it is available for mostly for human being but we can use in animals also in animals it is available as the feed the uh, feed antibiotic and that's why it is considered to be very safe for animals cefotoxin cefotoxin chloramphenicol streptococcus ciprofloxacin these are these may be the drug of choice the second two column the most effective herbal antimicrobials from lower respiratory tract there is one only which can uh, inhibit more than 95 90% uh, bacteria of the pig upper respiratory and lower respiratory tract is, that is that is the patchouli essential oil and it is not uh, a very costly item it is available almost at uh, every Uh, shop of attar that is those people who sell this essential oils and patchouli is very commonly used uh, essential oil in many of the itr so it is having very good antimicrobial activity against bacteria of lower respiratory tract of the pigs the most effective antibiotic for lower respiratory tract infection in pig is the imipenem tigicycline and miropenem but um, uh, we are unlucky we cannot use any of these so we have to use those are the less effective antibiotics so now we come to the horses horses they, there are the viruses which affect primarily and bacteria which are isolated they are usually the secondary in that and one yeast like fungi known as the nemocystis carini or girovesai it causes bronco interstitial pneumonia in horses and it, its incidence has not been reported in india but it, people are saying that it is increasing and i could not find any report also that it has been reported in india. but you can see several bacteria which has been classified as the secondary invader they are there and the streptococcus equis of this c ju epidermicus it is and clapsella pneumoniae they are known as the cause of the respiratory tract infections and they were there pasturella cabali which have been isolated uh, a few years back in our laboratory and it was the first report from india about the pasturella cavalli and there are several other bacteria which may be important but 
they appears to be mostly the secondary matter, not the primary cause. So what is the best herbal antimicrobial for horses? That is again cinnamaldehyde, carbacrol, cinnamon oil, olibacil oil, thyme oil, ajwain oil. And drugs, imipenum, tegicycline, chloramphenicol, linezolid, and uh, if, even if we want to use imipenum and tegicycline, though we are not permitted in, to use in animals, we cannot use because a dose of horse that may cost some seven or eight thousand per day for imipenum and tegicycline. So we have only one option that is chloramphenicol. Linezolid is available only for uh, oral use in animals and it is effective only against gram positive bacteria but it is always difficult to identify that either we have to use gram positive or anti antibiotic to inhibit the gram positive or gram negative bacteria. We do not know at first time that what may be causing the infection in this or that case. So usually veterinarians go for broad spectrum antibiotics and here the chloramphenicol may be one of the good options. In goats, the common uh, goats are usually less susceptible to upper respiratory and lower respiratory tract infections, but they get affected. It is not that they are not having the respiratory tract infection. When they have some pharyngeal trauma or they have some uh, stress uh, due to that uh, uh, either cold or very hot season, then usually they get infection from the bacteria. So for goats, the common bacteria which we identified in goats were the, those only which are common cells. And both the both cases, the upper respiratory tract infection and lower respiratory tract infection. And most effective herbals were the same and most effective antibiotics, ciprofloxacin, azithromycin, linezolid and vancomycin only for gram positive bacteria. But azithromycin and ciprofloxacin, they are broad spectrum and they can be tried. So in conclusion, we can say that bacteria are common invaders of respiratory tract after some primary injury, either with viruses, parasites, fungi, physical or chemical agents. And sometimes the, uh, this environmental stresses, they precipitate these respiratory tract infections. And you know, even in many of the uh, infections in human being, either they are viral or some other, seasonality is very important. And this seasonality is due to the stress associated with that specific season. High humidity, hotness, that is often associated with the infections in, uh, we can say the climate of India and Africa, but in case of cold climate, that is low humidity and low temperature, that is often associated with the injury to the respiratory tract and you know our respiratory tract is the most exposed tract to the external environment. We are every minute we are taking many liters of air inside and either we are uh, if we compare with the, our the gastrointestinal tract we occasionally that is we eat two three times a day at the most and we drink water at a certain interval and we can filter the water, we can make and food is often, uh, cooked food is devoid of any pathogen. But we are inhaling lot of air and we are not using the filters at all the time. And uh, at certain places we can use the HIPAA filters and uh, other filters which can filter your air. 
but at most of the places we are exposed to the air directly and bacteria present in air they can infect us viruses present in air you know this covid is spreading through air and that's why many a time <clears throat> what happens that we think that if we are putting this or that we will be saved from the infections but it usually do not happens when our immunity goes down our mucosal immunity specifically in case of the respiratory tract infection if our mucosal immunity goes down certainly we are very prone to have infection most of the bacteria causing respiratory tract infection in animal are commensally present in upper respiratory tract and they are opportunistic pathogen they got the opportunity because of the some primary cause either there was viral infection or there was some immune disorder or we are sometimes it happens even when we have taken some overdose of antibiotics with the overdose of antibiotics or the uh, we can say many antibiotics at a time they make us sick not only our respiratory tract infection but our gastrointestinal tract infections they are also precipitated due to use of antibiotics so most of the bacteria which are causing respiratory tract infection and even the gastrointestinal tract infection they are commensally present but they get opportunity when we have done some harm to ourselves so multi plicity of bacteria and respiratory tract is common because air is full of bacteria and our respiratory tract has already been colonized with so many different kind of bacteria so when there is opportunity any of those can enter into the lungs and it is usually not that only one kind of bacteria is present in a case of respiratory tract infection you may find several different types of bacteria but which is causing the infection this is again the big problem to identify that how to reach to the conclusion even if we submit the samples for bacteriological anal analysis in laboratory they will tell that in your sample this 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 bacteria is there but how you will ascertain that which bacteria is there so that's why there is need to understand some common antimicrobials which can kill most of the or which can inhibit growth of most of the commensal or the primary cause of the respiratory tract infections among the herbal antimicrobials these are cinnamon oil which is present uh, which contains cinnamaldehyde patchouli essential oil ajwain Uh, oil or uh, and thyme oil they contain carbacrol they can be tried for fumigation of animal houses to kill potentially pathogenic bacteria causing respiratory tract infections and in our study we found that bacteria which are not harmful or the grass bacteria generally accepted as safe they are less affected by these herbal antibiotics they are naturally resistant to most of the herbal antibiotics but when we will be using these herbal antimicrobials in frequency higher than required or we will be over using these certainly there is a risk of emergence of herbal antimicrobial resistance and we have noticed several times that herbal antimicrobial resistance is more common in Uh, animals which are near the herbal gardens or which are in wild because wild animals they usually uh, take up so many herbals and uh, it is not necessary that cinnamaldehyde will be present only in cinnamon oil it may be present in some other plants also and this patchouli oil ajwain oil containing carbacrol patchouli uh, so these patchouli oil i am in, uh, saying again and again this patchouli oil because that is 
very commonly available and it is very pleasant smelling and it is not so dangerous as the cinnamon oil and ajwain oil if you dip your finger into pure cinnamon oil and ajwain oil you may you may get injured yourself because they are very caustic in nature but patchouli oil that is quite mild and heavy very good antimicrobial activity so it can be used easily in steam inhalation but the cinnamon oil and ajwain oil if you pull put to uh, steam they usually cause irritation to eyes to human you can say that while you know, taking steam you should close your eyes but you cannot direct animals that you should do it like this or that so using the herbals in case of animals is not easy but we can if we know that yes there is tensile we can devise the ways to use those some of the antibiotics niropenem imipenem chloram phenicol tigicycline renazolid vancomycin they are invariably effective on animal respiratory tract infections but most of these are not available for animal use among these we have only one antibiotic chloram phenicol but that is also not commonly used by most of the veterinarians because in their view it is often a human antibiotic rather than the animal antibiotic and earlier it was kept reserved for human beings only now since last few years it it is coming for animal use also because in human it has become almost outdated and most of the human pathogens they are getting resistance to chloram phenicol also and they are using imipenem miropenem and tigicycline linazolid more commonly so a few of the antibiotics can be recommended on the basis of antimicrobial sensitivity assay done on selected cases but again i will warn that this these findings cannot be generalized because in our laboratory we get only the referred cases referred sample which have not responded to normal treatment which have not responded to the treatment given by the veterinarians at local level or given by the, uh, given treatment by the uh, we can say jhola chap or quacks so we have to think of what to use and what not to use just putting some of our background knowledge so i think it is over and uh, i have shown two photos of this hemorrhagic septicemia in bull and buffalo and this open mouth respiration is very common but it is not limited to only hemorrhagic septicemia open mouth respiration is always there when there is involvement of the lung or when there is blockage in the upper respiratory tract so that animal is not able to inhale the required amount of air and required amount of oxygen is not there so there is reflux to open the mouth to get more and more air inside so that oxygen demand can be met up so thank you for inviting me to deliver this talk and uh, it is open for questions if any you have Really, very informative talk, and uh, I must say uh, we are very privileged in having you, sir. Sir, I suppose that has given uh, given us a clear perspective on the clinical and diagnostic aspects uh, on the respiratory tract infections. He has uh, not only emphasized on the allopathic uh, antimicrobials, but also on the herbal one. So um, I am sure that our participants must have uh, got the insight on the topic. It was a really uh, very good and informative talk. So we have some questions in our chat box. 
uh, first is can we use combination of herbal and synthetic antibiotics for urti uh, as treatments yeah certainly we can have but uh, we cannot combine these two drugs we can use uh, two drugs that is herbals and antibiotics simultaneously but not like that uh, we combine this uh, sulfa drug with the uh, trimethoprim we cannot use in that way but we can take two therapies at a time and it is now uh, uh, we have learned a lot about use of these uh, conventional uh, therapies due to covid also now you people might be knowing that you are taking antibiotics along with the steam inhalation putting some this or that uh, ingredient in steam so that is all herbal most of the inhalations except the corticosteroid which are given to human being in the in certain cases most of the time they are also using the herbals herbal oils so we can use so we have the other question from the same uh, participant that can herbal antibiotics be used for the prevention of upper respiratory tract infections uh, though we have not uh, Uh, studied this type of uh, problem that either we can do it is for prevention or not. But uh, I think that if we will be using in excess, certainly we will be making our uh, pathogens more resistant to herbals also. So indiscriminate use is I I uh, will always discourage that when there is no need. we should not use either it is herbal antimicrobial or synthetic antibiotics or natural antibiotics and for uh, herbals we never use the word antibiotics they are not herbal antibiotics we always use the word herbal antimicrobials sir so the another question is uh, any commercial preparation of cinnamaldehyde to treat animals in india if available there please suggest and how much cost effective it is i don't know uh, and i do not think that anyone has produced this cinnamaldehyde and cinnamaldehyde uh, is uh, not easily available also but cinnamon oil yes you can use cinnamon oil it contains about 50% cinnamaldehyde in it so cinnamon oil can be used and it is available in market and you can purchase but uh, uh, if you think of the cost about 5 ml cinnamon oil which is available in market it cost around 200 rupees so cinnamon oil can be used and if you want to use even the source of cinnamon oil that is cinnamon bark that is also not a cheaper option but certainly the other option in upper respiratory tract infections google is very effective and google is not very costly you can buy google at the rate of 1000 rupees per kg in normal market and uh, 10 gram google if you are burning in a one room where you can keep your animals four five goats or two cows or two cattle easily you can keep there and if you keep there for half an hour that may be a good option and another oil is the holy basil oil rather than thinking of the cinnamon oil or the cinnamaldehyde we can think of the holy basil oil that is also not very costly so there are options so one of the question is uh, doses of herbal preparation in case of fumigation and how it is performed for fumigating this uh, a room of uh, we can say some uh, 
with the 100 cubic feet, that is 10 into 10 into 10, you need around 5 ml of herbal oil. And how to fumigate, or usually fumigation is avoided, people go for the steam inhalation. We boil butter, about 5 liter of butter, butter and put it and just pour that 5 ml of uh, oil in that and close the door. And after some time, when the room is filled with all the fumes of that oil, you can put the animals. But it should not be like that you have kept the animal and put the boiling water and then you close the door, you may get your animals injured because animals, they do not understand that they may have some problem in inhalation. Even we are often feel it is not uh, uh, good to inhale, which we do not like. So they may be uh, frenzied or they may be moving here and there. So first we make the room full of the steam loaded with the oil, oil fumes. And then we put the animal there for some time. So that is the usual way. I could not hear Gauri. I could not hear you. Sorry, sorry, sir. My I was mute. Uh, the uh, sir, the one uh, Dr. Joyce has asked uh, your opinion on amoxicillin uh, plus sulbectin combination or the androfloxacin used in respiratory tract infections. In respiratory tract infection, in none of the uh, case, either it is. Um, isolate of uh, animals, uh, that is cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, or pig, or horse. We never found that amrofloxacin or ciprofloxacin a drug of choice. It usually fails to kill most of the respiratory tract pathogen, but it, it is effective on others. Gastrointestinal tract infections, it is very good. But uh, on respiratory tract infections, you can think of the amoxic lab or amoxicillin sulfactam. And in one of the our uh, study, we found that amoxicillin sulfactam is much better than amoxicillin labulanic acid. But in market, amoxicillin sulfactam is rarely available. Most of the time it is amoxicillin labulanic acid. That is the major problem. So alternatively, we can go for the ampicillin sulfactam, which is commonly available. And that is also uh, good, as good as the amoxicillin sulfactam. Okay, thank you, sir. We do. Have any? So I thank you all for providing me opportunity, especially my, my colleague, Dr. Radotra. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I'm Ardul, sir. Uh, sir, we have one more query. Yeah. Can we use camphor for RTI in uh, dairy animals? If yes, then the efficiency of this is comparable to Google or not? I have never compared this camphor with Google because uh, it is not easy to perform MIC studies with camphor. But camphor, uh, we have experienced when uh, I went to Nathula Pass, there I saw many people fainting. And they were providing their uh, this camphor to inhale and they were getting benefit. So that is due to bronchodilator effect of camphor rather than antibacterial effect of camphor. So it depends what is the requirement. 
if animal is facing problem of respiration and it can be tried in uh, particularly in case of the hs hemorrhagic septicemia to clear the pathways that is the respiratory pathways so rather than using it as antimicrobial because camphor in very low doses if it goes in, goes inside our system it is toxic it is not tolerable our cells are also liable to be affected for this camphor and uh, camphor is not as safe as the holy basil oil so sir has taken all the queries uh, and addressed all the issues uh, very well so thank you so much sir we are really privileged to have you sir so thank, thank you, you so thank you uh, thank you all for the participants for the participants i would like to add about dr singh that he is uh, writing so many blogs on covid 19 and analyzing, <laughs> analyzing his data day to day one more thing dr singh's research articles are mostly read by scientific fraternity across the globe so it's privileged for us to have dr singh thank you dr singh over to gauri so dear participants yes sir so dear participants uh, so we are over with the first session now in the second session uh, we will be having dr jiju p alex uh, director of extension a uh, directorate of extension kerala agriculture university uh, kerala so uh, he will be presenting uh, his topic on nutritional interventions for sustainable and profitable livestock production so we will meet at uh, uh, around 2:30 thank you all thank you everyone thanks for joining let's join back at 2:30 thanks majid thank you dr majid